<laughs> what up? It's your boy, Luke for Prez, back in the mix. Today, we have a very special guest joining us. None other than one of my favorite recording artists ever uh, in general, and one of my favorite that I've ever got the privilege to work with personally, Mr. Mikey SB. Welcome to the Luke for Prez YouTube channel. How you doing, brother? I'm doing uh, swell. How about yourself, man? I can't complain, man. I can't complain. A lot going on, but we stand positive, motivated, focused, eyes awesome. on the prize. You know how it is. Um, for those who don't know uh, Mike's music, he is a, a phenomenal rapper slash singer slash songwriter. Uh, his recent single, Slow Day, was actually selected uh, for the I Am Other compilation album that was personally curated by Pharrell Williams himself, by all accounts. Uh, congratulations on that, big dog. That's a, that's a huge step in the right direction, I would say. Um, yeah, no doubt. And uh, he is someone that I have worked with personally on a number of songs, uh, both uh, on official releases and uh, a ton of unreleased gems that we have in the vault. We're kind of just building a whole Sheesh. collection. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um and uh i actually uh found mike on soundcloud a couple of years ago using a very early iteration of my soundcloud reach out strategy that you may have seen me do a video on earlier um i guess last year now or a few months ago whatever um he was one of the first people that i reached out to uh via soundcloud when i started uh, taking music production seriously, posting my beats online, and really trying to find artists to build and grow with. Uh, I remember you had a song on your profile. The first thing that caught my mind, and it's funny because it's not like a typical Mike SB song, but you had a song that uh, the beat had a Godfather sample in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah, one it all. That shit was I so just, fire. I was like, God damn, who is this guy? And I started clicking around, listening to more of your stuff. And um, realized that I had a couple beats at the time. And again, this was really early on, but that I, I thought would be a good fit for you. So I, I sent you a, a cold message, introduced myself, said, I love your work. Here's a couple beats. You responded right away, which is rare. Um, I need beats. <laughs> not only that, but you were like, oh yeah, that sounds great, man. Check out this website. I have a publishing company, all this stuff. I'm like, whoa, holy shit. Like, who is this guy? And uh, so I, I, I checked out, uh, you know, that venture and, and just more about you and sent you over the beats. And within a week, I think you sent me back one. And I was shocked not only at the speed with which that you worked, but just how fire the song was. Um, I think that one was called She Say, hey, if you remember that. She that's, she love. Yeah, that's the that's the throwback. But um, yeah, so that's how uh, I met Mike. We've been uh, collaborators and friends ever since. We've linked in person several times. Um, and now here we are, you know, collaborating on, on yet another piece of content. Thank you so much for joining me oh, yeah. um, on this. Really, what I want to, uh, to do, and I was kind of getting into this a little bit off camera before uh, we hit record, but, you know, I spend all my time talking uh, to producers about marketing techniques and I think what ends up happening a lot of times for producers is um, they look at the artist as maybe just a number or a statistic or a like or a view or a beat sale or whatever the case may be, especially for producers who maybe are in smaller markets and don't have ample opportunities to work with artists face to face. Um, when that happens, I think it's easy to lose track of the psychology of the artist, of our customer, our collaborator, our client, if you will, what their process is um, in terms of selecting beats, um, finding beats, and just the entire online, you know, uh, beat marketplace that we've developed here. So the first thing I really want to dive into, and I know this is like a ridiculously long intro, but um, yeah, I would on, love dude. to just, <laughs> I would love to just kind of hear your process in terms of, you know, where you go to find beats and, and, Maybe we can talk about things that you see producers do that you like 
things that annoy you and, and just provide the, the artist insight to the producer community, if you will. Sure. What's going on, world? <clears throat> Your boy Mikey SB out here. Yo, shout out to my guy Luke for Prez, number one. Because that SoundCloud thing that he was talking about, like, I actually thought he was real. I didn't know he had a strategy going on. I thought he was like, but he it was real. real. It was, hey, at that point, especially, it was real. It was no, real. But it, I, it, I it's hilarious. People I really fuck Listen, with. it was super successful. That was awesome. I'm glad. And it's, but it's cool, you know, now, you know, time after that to, to look back and hear from you what the, like, the, you know, the mindset was like doing that. Cause I just was like, I get them left and right. Uh, but a lot of the times, uh, yeah, you know, some some producers don't approach me in the way that I'd like to, but every everybody's got levels. There's levels to it. Some artists don't pro- approach me the way I, I'd like them to, and and sometimes shit. Oh, am I allowed to curse? Oh yeah, hell yeah. Sometimes shit just ain't the way I like in general in life because that you can't always have your way. So things aren't perfect, but yeah, man. Uh, you know, another shout out to my boy Luke for press crushing the game, man. Get <laughs> round. Yeah, <laughs> running Thanks, for present. But, you know, beats. One thing, I wrote down something uh, when you were talking earlier, and I said, uh, have a tight beat for everything. Like an artist nowadays, it, the, the idea of the tight beat, you know, I just thought of it while he was thinking, while he was just saying everything he was saying. Great guy. And uh, the tight beat is not just because one producer was one day was like, yo, I need to make a beat like that. It might be, that's one side of the thinking. A producer was like, yo, I need to make a beat like little baby, you know, a little baby type beat. And, and then the, it became a thing. It's also from the artist perspective, like, Oh, yo, that new Don Tolliver just dropped. Like I need a Don Tolliver type beat. So it's just like, it, it's crazy. It's the dynamic of thinking. And that goes to show like as an artist, Sometimes I literally look for beats just based on artists I like. And that's not because the producers do it. That's because I actually, ha- that's what I'm thinking. Like, oh, I need a beat like this. I need a beat like that. Uh, so I think that was important. That was just a funny tidbit. Uh, I just literally thought about it. It's literally off a of need and necessity, not just because it's like a fad. Uh, but right. then also for, to the, to the levels thing, you know, there's levels to it. Everybody's on a different level. Uh, I first started, you know, looking for beats on SoundCloud when SoundCloud was, like the place because there wasn't all these digital streaming platforms you know as much competing the way they are you know it really wasn't there yet and uh there used to be a a go page or an explore page on soundcloud i think there still is but there i think it's the explore page or you know i'm probably getting it wrong but you used to be able to go on there and i'd just see a live stream of like you know all these you'd be able to find producers so quickly because it like it advertised like not even advertised but it just the algorithm was showing a lot more like cool stuff at that time. It wasn't even people I followed. It was like the explore page for people you don't follow. And it just knew what I liked. So it was just showing me a bunch of stuff. And I networked with a lot of the artists that a lot of the producers and composers that like produced my catalog, you know, all off of SoundCloud, like my, one of my more, uh, more stream songs, love more uh, was produced by a kid named Myers, who was a SoundCloud producer who, you know, I liked one of his beats and I reached out. I think I reached out like, yo, let me use this. Uh, so just to the, to the fact that SoundCloud is cool. And that was, uh, that was, that's how the game was, you know, but nowadays I have beats left and right that I could pick from and, you know, stuff gets old. So I, I know I just talked a lot, but I think the main, one of the uh, major other points is like to the levels thing, you know, I've, came a long ways from how I look for beats. You know, I still go back to YouTube. Nowadays, I'm looking for beats on YouTube. I'm looking for beats on BeatStars. I'm looking for beats. Those are really the two places, YouTube and BeatStars. And then I'm getting emails or I'm making something. And if it's not one of those things, then I'm not making music, Um, which is kind of the bad thing too. That's why I've been picking up the guitar more and trying to self-produce because I don't want to like rely on the, on the, hope that there's a beat out there that's going to represent how I feel creatively at the time. You know, I, I want to be like, I want to start that. I want to make that uh, off of how I, how I feel. Cause I, I feel, you know, creatively, like I just, you know, I think sometimes it's, you get locked into the type of music you have to write to. So that's right. why, that's why I think it's cool to self-produce some stuff. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, man, nowadays, uh, that's how it is. But back in the day, it was all SoundCloud and, yeah. uh, and now, I don't like anything. Now I'm super picky. <laughs> That's good though. And, and talking about levels and just kind of uh, the evolution of your career as an artist, as a creator, you, you, it's only natural to become more selective, more picky and re- have more of a refined taste 
And I feel the same way on the production side of things, just in terms of presets and VSTs that I want to use, you know, the, my taste in that has changed and my ear for what sounds fake versus what sounds real, my ear for samples and, or using loops that other producers now send me. And, you know, I think that's, that's just a, a good natural part of, of the process. Um, I think it's interesting what you said, like you, you at times you have to be kind of pigeonholed into what's available. And I think that's one of maybe the downsides of this online uh, beat selling uh, community that now exists it's because there is, even though like the internet is, is amazing and it unifies the world and it allows people from all over the place to link with other like-minded creatives. So there, I think there's some magic that gets lost when you're not face to face with an artist in the room, cooking up on the spot where you can both kind of feel the vibe, feel the energy and, and just bounce ideas off of one another. And while I don't think we've ever really like sat and I've like cooked up a beat for you on the spot, the times that we have linked and made music, even just being in the room and being able to like play certain things for you and stuff. I think like some of our best stuff has happened because of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think if, if there's one kind of piece of advice I could give for like a up and coming producer who's just getting started out. Like don't, uh, don't neglect the face to face interactions. Even if you're in a smaller market, do your very best to network with local acts. There's, there's bound to be people close by that, you know, are on the same wavelength and, you know, are into the same type of music. And I, I truly think that that's when the best um, results are made. But for those times when you do, go on YouTube, let's say, right? Because mm. I think that's really where uh, most of my audience kind of post their music to. Yeah, and that's yeah. definitely where I, I post my music to. In addition to BeatStars, those are my two top platforms for posting as well. When you, when you go there to search for something, do you literally type in like Don Tolliver type beat? Do you, yes. do you literally put an artist yeah, in there? Cause, yeah, because how else am I going to find it? Like, I, right. I, I think it's like the, I, I literally, I don't know, like how, it's either that or if you just type in like hip hop, like beats, like 2020, you end up getting like some like off brand, like not even cool. Like just like, so like those you get, you can get it, you can narrow down and be like, you know, super niche with like what you're looking for. But yeah, literally like, you know, Don Tolliver type beat, Mac Miller type beat. That's how Crab right. Cakes came out. You know, a dude wow. named Seco who was producing on their circles type beat. It was a Mac Miller circles type beat, you know, like, right. It's right. hilarious. Literally just like that. Oh, one thing I wanted to say about, uh, about producers you want to do something like for a dude who's super picky is have a type beat of everything any type beat that you think of fuck uh do it you know luke's doing that like crazy you know he's always looking on the new stuff on the new artists coming up you got to do that too even if it's like a you know anything because i might one day look up like a jack johnson type beat and if you're a hip-hop producer who never thought of making jack jack johnson type beats you might be limiting yourself because you know like i think you know, those, that type of stuff, like anything, like, cause any, every day is different as an artist, even as a producer, as a human. So some days I feel like Lil Uzi. Some days I feel like Mac Miller. Some days I feel like Jack Johnson. Some days I feel like the Foo Fighters. I mean, I don't know. I feel like everybody. So I'm always like looking for something else. So just as a tip from an artist's point of view, like if you wanted to like make sure that you were like getting your beats out there and people were using them, make a type beat for everything, every freaking genre, every name, every whoever, whatever you think of, like do it because what there's a chance that like one day soon I'll be looking for it. You know, <laughs> That's awesome. And for some of those more obscure artists or just even not obscure at all, but just outside of traditional hip hop, uh, the competition is going to be a lot less. There's a lot of, there's a lot less people thinking outside the box and, you know, typing in Jack Johnson type beat, I would imagine. Oh. I haven't, I haven't checked the, uh, the two buddy analytics for that one, but I, I imagine there's less competition for that. So that's definitely a gem. Um, and that's something that, you know, it, I always have trouble with titling the, the beats and, and there's always kind of been this con controversy, controversy around uh, type beats just in the space in general. People, you know, some people don't like how um all, you know people have this perception that all you're trying to do is like copy the hot sound right yeah. but really from my perspective it's just purely a, a marketing tactic um 
and I'll never go into a beat making uh, the, actually I'll do this. Like if I'm trying to work with a specific artist, sometimes even I've done this for you several times where I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna try to make something that Mike would like today or wh whatever. Right. But outside of that, when I'm just going into making a beat, I never sit there and think, okay, this is going to be a little baby type beat. I, I literally listen to it when it's done. And I think, okay, who could I hear on this? Mm -hmm. And then who could I hear on this? That's also, uh, ranking high in, in search volume for, for YouTube and kind of let that be my guide to a degree, but I'm always trying, you know, new artists. And, and like you said, I, I do try to stay up on, uh, the latest, you know, uh, up and coming people that, that might start to get more traction and have a new creative sound that I could maybe emulate. So, um, that's just a little aside, but all right. So to continue down this, this process, you're on YouTube, you type in Mac Miller type beat, there's endless beats that come up, right? People have a ton of different thumbnail strategies um, for, you know, what they want the, the, the beat to, to look like on those search results. Have you found yourself clicking on a specific type of thumbnail? Is there a, a color scheme that stands out to you? Or is it something in the title uh, of the beat or of the video that stands out or do you just kind of click random shit and, and see what's popping dude i think it's there's definitely like obviously if it looks good it's just like in real life anything if it looks better like more than likely i'm going to like be drawn to it so i think that's like a given like standard definitely make it look good and yeah but it has to sound good so you can have the trashiest title and the trashiest avatar or uh, <laughs> avatar <laughs> thumbnail and then <laughs> If the beat's banging and it's what I'm looking for, then screw everybody else because I'm, I don't care about any of that. I think that's the point. Like, right. I don't care, but I think I see how, I see how you, hold on, hold on. Jesus, Look at this. Trying to listen, trying to mess my money up. Uh, <laughs> no, but I could see how that would be a thing. Like, Oh, because I really want to like, you know, target these people and I really want to like make it work and be effective. Like, but like, dude, I don't think of any of that. I type in type B just because that's like legit. I think that's the only way, like how, right. tell me how, tell me, how, tell me how else to find a beat. I don't know. So type B and then, yeah. Uh, yeah. You definitely, if it sounds good, it's good, but definitely I'm clicking through each one. I'm clicking through a lot of them, you know, but if it looks better, more inclined to do it, but it's got to sound good overall. If it looks right. good, but then you're trash, like, you did, you did one thing good, but you got to do the other. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm not that picky on the, on the marketing aspect of it, but sound good. Right, right. And, and that's something that I've tried to stress as well. I've, I've experimented with a number of different thumbnail types, and I'm actually in the process of transitioning to yet another uh, variation of that. And uh, really what I've always stressed to uh, you know, the, my small community is that I think it matters less what the thumbnail is and just that it's eye catching enough to get you to click on it initially. And then from there, like you said, it, you know, the, the music will speak for itself, but um, it's, it, it doesn't necessarily matter what your theme is. I think a lot of producers maybe get bogged down in trying to find some aesthetic and yes. have all of their videos look exactly the same and have it look all cool. Like, like some perfectly curated Instagram feed and, and really I think they're you're kind of getting bogged down in the minutia uh, if that's if that's a problem, you should really just kind of pick something that you think stands out well and just go for it and don't overthink it, I think is the uh, the ultimate piece of advice for that aspect of it. And so it's good to hear you kind of echo those sentiments with that when you're when you're browsing. Yeah, man. And definitely, uh, you know, that's just like that's people things. So oh, overthinking this overthinking that like, oh, it's got to look like this. It's got to look like that. It's like, dude, you don't know. That's like what that's you don't know. Like, why like tell me why i mean like because people say so or because you think like no you don't know like you know go do the research talk to the people if you really want to know like they might just tell you like i'm telling you who's like hey i don't care like as long as you're good you're good i mean obviously if it looks better it's better uh but it's funny like how people assume things just like businesses spend a lot of money on things that they think people want but then when they bring it to market they fail it's because like you didn't go talk to people like you right. got to figure out what the people actually want and then build something based off of their want and need or need. So for me, yeah, I don't want anything fucking crazy. Sound right. good. But what is good? You know, I mean, just quality, like quality. It shouldn't be clipping in my ears. You know, it shouldn't like be breaking my ears at, at half volume because it's too loud. Everything should just be like clean. You know how to mix your stuff, but don't, don't hurt. Yeah. Easy. Keep it quality. Right. Less is more.
<laughs> right. Right. And that actually is a kind of a perfect segue in terms of just talking about the types of beats that you will select to uh, to use for your songs at all. I think this is, you know, a, a sentiment that's been echoed by many uh, big producers and artists in the past, but keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate the beats. And what I've learned from working with you specifically is especially when it comes to the melodies, don't be throwing in, you know, 25 different counter melodies at, at different points and adding all this ear candy that only other producers are probably going to pick up on, you know? Um, and so that's something that I'm still in the process of, of working towards is really just being able to um, envision how the artist will attack this. What, what pocket will they find? And if you approach every beat with that in mind, uh, from the outset, I think you, you will find, you know, you, you'll start to sell more and more beats to to, <clears throat> to people if it's easy for the, the rapper to rap on them. Yeah, yeah, super, super key. And I think it's funny because, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you kind of get stuck with what you get. Like, as an artist, if you're only an artist, and there's a difference between an artist and a songwriter, but let's say you're the artist and songwriter at this point, but uh, <coughs> you have to... Like you get stuck with what you got if you don't know how to play an instrument or self-produce or do anything like that. So you really, you know, you really got to look and find a lot of people I know spend a lot of time looking for beats, you know. Um, but yeah, man, in, uh, oh, I had something good I was going to say. Hold on. We were just talking. Oh, oh, no, that was good. Oh, hold on. Uh, and what we were talking, what were we even just talking about? <laughs> hold on. No, tell me again. Tell me one more time. Just give me like a sentence. Uh, just producers should not overcomplicate the oh yeah listen good stuff see like that's what i'm talking about so i actually i get stuck with what i i get so your fin finished product is like what i get to work with but in reality i'm just starting a product so i always get like with a 50 percent painted canvas you know as this other artist that i was listening to on uh mike boyd jr's podcast or whatever uh but uh yeah you get i get i get to start with like half of the picture painted you know i actually think it should be the other way around. And I think, you know, that I think, I think opposite. So I'm always thinking like, I have ideas in my head that make me want to go make music, but the beat drives me on how to write and continue to write and choose the records that I write to. They've got to hit me a certain type of way that inspires me to continue off of the initial idea. So it's really like, you know, it's hard to put an algorithm to it or, or but it's really just like make good music and you just put all different types of stuff out uh, and it's cool uh, and somebody's going to choose it. But I think uh, that, I like to work with nothing like a drum loop. Give me a drum loop. Like I almost think it should be backwards instead of me working with a totally finished product. I think we should like hit that point just to pick out kind of the lane I want to go and then like strip it all down so I could build from drums or, or, or like, you know, ground floor, you know, building bricks of this beat and then we can build the record together because I think it should be more of like, uh, you know, like, you know, if I had more say on more of the records that I do, that I do, they'd be different, you know, yeah. production wise, uh, adding more things. I always wish I could get in the studio another time and another time and another time, but it costs money. And if you're not doing it, you know, uh, or it just takes time and you can never get it too, too, too perfect. But always after the fact, you listen to it for like months and you're like, Oh, you know, I have all these new melodies in my head now. And I have, <laughs> you know, wish I had some like scratches in there, like DJ stuff. But yeah, it's funny. It's as an artist. Now I want to build from the ground up because I'm very particular and I have a lot of ideas not even that I'm super particular but like I have ideas that I think are beneficial and I'm not necessarily as proficient in getting those ideas out but I have them and I think they're good so that's so like now I want to like be like at that point but yeah right right so are you looking to uh I know you said you're, you're starting to dabble in, in self-production a little bit more picking up the guitar a little bit more is that something you see yourself taking more seriously becoming like the the Kanye J. Cole oh. uh producer slash rapper at any time well no man i mean maybe if i can't yeah if i sp if for some reason i was able to spend a lot more time in the studio i would but it's hard enough to write a record for me so i try and i, I try and write the records but dude sometimes out of necessity i have to but that's why i've been that's why i do it i don't do it to like be that you know that guy that you just explained but i hope i can one day but like i do it because i need to like i can't find a type beat that i want I, I have a certain idea and i'm like man it doesn't sound like any of these things i'm listening to like because they get old and repetitive and people yeah. you know like you were saying in the type beat lane sometimes you know it's just like super like oh my gosh but and beats in general oh my gosh i'm gonna kill you luke i'm sorry don't kill me <laughs> no nah, that's all good brother um, but like yeah with beats in general i should have turned it off i just turned it off you know <laughs> that's yeah yeah 
I don't even know what I was going to say again. Oh my gosh. Well, no, it was good. It was, it was all good. I, I, I feel you. I think things definitely can get repetitive and, and producers at times kind of box themselves in a bit and maybe focus too much on the YouTube algorithm and trying to get these, uh, dude, you know. it's all out of need is what I was saying. And it's so true. It's because I literally dude, like ideas are, they, I legit think it's like divine intervention because I have no freaking clue how I come up with all these ideas that to me, like, aren't really what they seem to be to everybody else, but everybody else thinks that they're crazy. So like, uh, I think it's all like higher power shit. And I think that, uh, you know, yeah, sometimes I can't, dude, it, it drives me like, then I pick up a guitar and I'm like, okay, it has to sound like this. I need all a beat is to an artist like me is, a, is, is enough to like lay my idea down. Like enough to get what I have inside of me out. So like, I don't mm -hmm. care about all the special fancy shit. That's why I like simple stuff. It's because I just need something groovy enough to let me get my idea out. It's not even how much I like the beat. It's like, yo, I need help getting this out of me. Like I have these ideas. I have these things. Like I have these feelings like this and I want to fucking say it. And you as the producer helped me like do that. And to right. me, that's, I look at it so much more like that than like more meticulously on like this, that it's like, dude, it's just gotta be clean and simple. Everybody reaches out to me. Yo, you know, what are you, what are you looking for? Bing, bing, boom. I'm just like, yo, I need clean drums, like chill guitar and like room for vocals. Like that's it. That's like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which it, it, it can be hard. Because I think, no, you know, I, I get that. I get produce, that. like sometimes, I mean, like a lot of the time, less is more, but that that also is very hard. I mean, think think of like DJ Mustard Beats, right? How simple are DJ Mustard Beats? But go ahead and try to recreate one. Try to make something that catchy. It's fucking difficult, you know? And uh, that's that's the beautiful challenge uh, of of music production is to find that balance where, you know, you have the you know the catchy elements but it's simple enough and it leaves enough space for the artists to do their thing and and you know that's really where the magic happens so i think that's definitely a good takeaway for you know some up-and-coming producers to have um just to always keep the artist in mind because so like i was saying like so many times we're just posted up in our bedrooms uh by ourselves you know, looking at this computer screen and and you know we're not uh, rappers primarily not not singers um for the most part so you know it's definitely important to put yourself in those shoes as best you can and, and really envision that other side. So I definitely appreciate your insight um, into that. And you kind of touched on what the next thing I wanted to ask you about was when you, you know, you said you get hit up by producers asking what you want and you have the, the luxury now of having some notoriety to where people are reaching out to you um, and, and looking to work with you. Can you talk to me about what, you know, can you give me like some examples of what a good interaction with a producer is versus one that just kind of annoyed you how they reached out? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think how you came across was great, you know? So I think, you know, just like any, like, just don't come at me with like a link, you know, mm -hmm. like a straight up link, but I'm even nice enough guy. Nowadays I delete them when they come in, but like, so I, sometimes I'll tell you like, yo, like, you know, I'll check you out, but like, you know, what do you expect from this? Like, you know, it right. doesn't work for anything, anything, try and sell me anything. I mean, you're not going to do that. So uh, I think sending just a link to a potential customer for one of your beats is like terrible. Uh, I also think that, you know, complimenting somebody is, is a great thing, you know, like Gary V, like you were talking about, you know, I think if you listen to Gary V, then you know that like uh, paying it forward is, is probably cool. And he'd probably say, Hey, we'll do it for free. Well, even without mentioning that, even just complimenting me is good enough, but don't sh force a sale. You don't have to force anything. Like nothing is forced in this space. For me, it's like, this is like passion territory. So like, I don't force anything. Like it's super chill. No matter what happens, happens. Like, you know how many records I write that don't come out? Like, you know, so you got to be cool with like that. So nothing forced, including the sale from the production side. Uh, but yeah, those to me, like if you don't oversell and if you don't just like send a link and if you compliment me, like, Hey, what's going on? Mike checked out. I saw your last photo, like, or Hey, your music is dope. Like, you know, I'd love to work. Like how, how do I not respond? 
you know, cause like I get other people who reach out like, yo, I love your stuff. Like, and they're not producers and I love responding. So if you respond, if you just compliment somebody, it goes a long way. Same way for me. If I reach out to a producer who's bigger than me and I want to work with them, it's, you think I'm just like sending a link or a record label. You think I'm, you know, like, no, like it's super professional. Like take yourself seriously, you know, be confident and don't force a sale, but like be super cool. Like, yo man, like, I'd love to work with you. Just listen to your last four records. They were super sick. And I love this one in particular and in, in particularly because of this, you know, made me feel some type of way. I appreciate it, bro. Like what? Like, that's like, dude, like made my day. Like I, I would literally probably say, yo, you made my day. Like, thank you. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll check your stuff out. Even if I don't like it, check it out. Give you an honest review. So yeah, be nice. Right. And be, be a human. Yeah. Cause there's no way to fake that. You know, that, that you can't fake legitimate uh, feedback, you know, po positive feedback. Uh, if you really do take the time to listen to the artist's work and you really do vibe with it, something about it resonates with you and you let them know, that's impossible to come off as as spam or or uh, disingenuous in, in some way. And, yeah. and that's something I've always tried to pride myself on um, in terms of my reach out strategy just from the very beginning is, you know, really only, and you know, obviously I've, I've experimented with more like mass email type stuff. But I've, had, I've definitely had the most success when I spend the extra time on each individual uh, you know, artist profile, whatever profile that might, may be, to really listen and really kind of understand whether or not I think I could work with this person, if this person has potential, et cetera. And I think that just goes a long way. And I think a lot of the times, you know, producers maybe uh, ignore the importance of you know, establishing that relationship from the jump. And, and just go straight to, you know, trying to, trying to get the clothes, like you were saying. And um, it's easy to fall into that trap. But again, if you're taking this seriously as a profession and as a career, and if it's really your passion, then it shouldn't be that difficult to want to do the groundwork and find artists on these platforms to uh, reach out to and connect with in a, in a meaningful way. And who knows where, you know, where that relationship might lead down the line when, when you go about it the right way. Yeah. And like, you know, who cares about making money like right away? Like, I mean, like you're, you're going to be, you're going to be as good as like you put into it. You know I mean? If you're in it just for like making money and like, you know, like that gets old and then eventually you won't want to do it anymore. But like the people who like build up from the ground up and like, cause like what I could have like signed a record deal. Like, even if it was a bad one, I mean, I could have signed like deals. I could have like done like shadier shit. Like I could have like not been as cool as I am, but <laughs> I like, dude, I, I've been doing this for like eight, nine, 10 years, like almost damn near paying for studio time and like hustling. But I never like, it was never about the bread. Like I was in school when I started doing it. I loved doing it cause I was doing it. I wasn't getting money doing it, but it didn't matter to me. I did it anyway, even when people didn't like it because I liked it that much. So if you're willing to do that, then over time you'll build your own style and no matter what type of shit you put out as a producer you'll be cool as hell and you know like that's it and i think that's like where i'm at right now and i'm trying to be and, and you know continue to you know aspire to be is just like me and and being an artist and painting my pictures and like whatever i do i do and so what like i do it because i want to do it and and that's what it is like and i think you should be the same way and all these producers should just like do them and you know if you're in it for the money, cool, do that too. Cause if you want to do that, do that. But if you're in it for the art and you just head down grind and don't worry about sales, like the first five years, you might find something crazy that happens too when you just right. get really into your craft. So yeah, God yeah, that's bless, exactly man. Right. Good luck. Yeah, that, I, I think that's exactly right. I think it, it has to come from a place of passion first. Um, and everything else will fall into place in the long run if you just put in the necessary groundwork, the necessary hours. And that will not be uh, as difficult as it sounds if you truly love it, you know? And uh, I, I'm with you, man. And I am, as somebody who has always been very money-driven my entire life <laughs> and, um, you know, come from a sales and marketing background and, and I've been able to apply some of those skills to the online beat selling community and love, you know, building an e-commerce business, which really when you break it down is what, uh, you know, a beat stars website is all about, uh, what gets me excited the most when thinking about the future is imagining what my beats would sound like with Drake rapping on it, future rapping on it, whoever else, like that really like gets me hype and excited and like gives me chills 
more than thinking about some seven figure publishing deal that I would get as a result of it. And that's crazy. That's like the first time in my life where it, that's been the case where it, it, ha it wasn't primarily like thinking about the money long term. And if you have that mindset, then you are in the right thing. You are watching the right video. You're watching the right channel. You're on the right platform. Get after it, you know, um, and, and tap in with people like uh, Mike SB. To this day, one of the most positive influences on my Instagram feed uh, <laughs> of all time, bro. Like shout out to you yeah. for that. Um, the, the consistent positive messaging that you provide your following with is extremely valuable um, and has resonated with me personally uh, as much as your music has, to be honest. Um, so sh shout out to you for that, man. It's uh, it, it, go check Mikey SB out on, on Instagram if you haven't <laughs> already. Yeah, man. That's It'll funny. make your day. And what's funny about that too is like that's just me doing doing me, and I don't look at it even as like that. I do though, obviously. I know what it is like positive messaging, like like dude, that's just me like being me. So it's funny because I've just been able to be me like on camera, like you know, and 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 people relate to it because that's like what I'm actually thinking. Like I'm not even like yo, I gotta like like I have these thoughts going through my head. Like I'm just self aware and conscious. So like it's funny to like be able to put it out and like have people like benefit from it. I think that's super cool. So it, it, it really, you know, helps me to keep going. Cause I actually need the shit. That's why I think about it. Like I procrastinate. I'm like, you know, I fuck up. Like I do things like regular humans do, but then I think about it and I'm like, man, I know I fucked up. Like, you know, I know, even though this is going on, I should be doing this, but like, so I put that out there cause I'm actually like going through it and I need that kick in the ass too. So, you know, yeah, man. Uh, shout out to Luke for Prez, you know, <laughs> crazy, crazy. Uh, leaps man we were in la when we made that take a flight record and that was that was great luke came over and showed me the first time we linked dude that was off of soundcloud i was like yeah this guy luke's coming over like you know don't know what to expect and whatever <laughs> he just came over and it was chill i didn't even know what he looked like i don't think i didn't even know and he pulled up in the in the cruiser <laughs> <laughs> and then uh yeah man that was a good record showed me some beats and then we made take a flight and then he pulled up to uh Miami, that was a great time too. And we made uh, Run It Back. This man showed me, go check out those records out. Take a flight and run it back if you haven't already. And this man just pulled up the first beat that he played in the studio. We rented some studio time and that was that was uh, Run It Back, man. Great stuff. So yeah, put your put your put your heaters up top, you know, so you're ready to ready to just see. That's a gem. Yeah. Play play your, your best shit first. I swear to God I didn't put those beats in any particular order. That was literally destiny. But, that's because you just made the right stuff, you know, and it, yeah. you brought it, you brought the right stuff to the party. You know? Right. Yeah. That's, and it's, that's what it boils down to a lot of the time. I think it's just, you know, being, uh, the, the timing, time. the vibe. Yeah, it, it, exactly. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, continuing to, you know, create some more great music with you and, and, you know, continuing to do content, you know, this is, this is, you know, is obviously a, a, a forum that I'm experimenting with, um, and so far, you know, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with, with the results. And if it's bringing value to the community in any way possible, then it's like super worth my, my discomfort being in front of the camera, which to this day, I'm still yeah, grappling with. Tripping. You're like, my buddy. you're like, man, I don't know why people are like that, but I get it. But yeah, dude, listen, man, shut up. You're a good looking dude. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> um, but I think, uh, what, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Listen, listen to Luke, man. He's a good dude. Uh, he's a good dude. And he's, he's telling some good stuff. And he's talking some facts and he's, he, you know, he's, he's, he's in it and he knows what he's talking about. You can see it's working and he's building. And I think that's super cool to see. So definitely, you know, if you're tapped in, keep on tapping in. And if you ain't tapped in, you better tap in before you miss out. Cause Luke for Prez, man. Next up. <laughs> the price is going up, baby. That's it, so, little by little. But um, yeah, I mean, that, that's really kind of what I wanted to, to discuss with you. Um, I guess maybe one other thing just to maybe leave the yeah. people with is um you know just you've been in the game for a long time like this is something that you you know you started when you were very very young um you know just any kind of general pieces of advice for you know the up and coming artist or producer because i think there's a lot of a lot of crossover there like th like just like actionable maybe habits that you've built that have yeah, yeah. yielded good results or just any kind of any kind of advice like that you could give the people yeah, definitely. Like what I would have, if I would have known sooner, but I didn't know, but like, trust your gut, you know, number one, like, but you're going to want to doubt it often, you know, as a human, because you're new to this, you know, or like, you know, you haven't like seen success with your ideas in that particular section yet, but yeah, trust, trust your gut and trust your ideas 
and you know try more because if you don't try then you'll never know and you might even think you know but never tried so then you're really in a bad position so definitely try and do stuff because it doesn't matter and failing is cool and making a bunch of records that never come out is cool because they're layups in the gym how many shots you shoot in practice before you even get in the game you shoot more shots in practice than you do in the game because you don't get a lot of time in the game you know maybe so it's like yeah you got to be able to take those just shots man in the gym jumping in the gym just making a bunch of records just to do it because if you don't do something a lot then you don't get good like i that's what i tell people a lot they're like oh mikey like you're so good and i'm like yeah well you just met me like you're nine like you should have met me like five years ago like you wouldn't have <laughs> liked it you know more than more likely than not so you know yeah it takes time to get good and, and you don't it's not just like time of like sitting there and waiting to get good it's time like doing things taking these shots in the gym like i'm saying whether you're a producer or a businessman actor you know artist whatever it's like yo yeah definitely just like do you trust your gut and fuck everybody because nobody knows shit. So, you know, and you don't even trust yourself and you trust more people often. So like trust yourself more and fuck everybody else and just keep your head down and just make, make music. If you're, if you're making music, just do your thing and, and you're going to make some cool shit and then, and then know it's cool before everybody else thinks it's cool. And then you're good. Yeah. That's it. That's self-belief. And invest, That's invest in yourself, you know, like, yeah, it takes money to make money and takes, you know, but, and keep your shit professional, you know, like, you know, like brand yourself, look at, look at what a brand is and like build your brand and like know that you're a brand and know that you're a business. And it's not just some fuck around shit. If you don't want it to just be some fuck around shit, it could just, it could be a real thing. So I think that's, that's important too. Love it, man. I appreciate your insight as always. I appreciate you being on uh, this, uh, this channel here and, and yeah. helping me along in this YouTube journey that I'm on. Look for praise. <laughs> Do you have uh, anything else you want to uh, tell the people? Any any projects to look out for, or or where they can find you on Instagram and and other Man, platforms? Go go listen to that head straight out now. You already know one of my favorite songs comes out next. You know, just stay tuned, man. It's Mike SB on Instagram and all that. And then uh, Mike SB on the streaming platform. So, yeah, you already know Mikey SB, Mike SB. I don't even care what you call me. I don't even care what you call me. Look at my name, Mike SB. Like, I've had that forever. My friend told me the other day, like, yo, you got to change that soon. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't even care about my name. Like, I, I just, it's all art to me. So, like, all everything else doesn't matter, but I know it's relevant and I know it's important. So, yeah, to that be professional tip, like, and think you're a brand, like, you know, take yourself serious and people take you serious. So, that's why that's important, you know. But to me, it's all about the art. So, yeah, you already know. Shout out my boy, Luke, for Prez. Thanks for having me, dude. And, uh, you know, that's it. We got, we got heaters on the way. So, y'all better stay tuned. Get your yeah. money up. <laughs> love it love it thank you so much mike um and thank you everybody for uh tuning in and stay tuned for more heat from uh, both of us yeah man work work your ass off too let's go hell yeah all right one love everybody peace you know what time it is really ain't nothing to stop me now i'm on my way no stop me now yeah all they love